This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. Ever since I made a video on Google Spreadsheet and ESP8266, many boys and girls have been requesting me to make a Google Spreadsheet and ESP8266 part 2 video to explain how do we send data or sensors threshold values from Google Spreadsheet to ESP8266 or ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Well, let me tell you that in part 1 I explained how you can send data from ESP8266 to Google Spreadsheet. So if you want to monitor sensors or send any other data from ESP8266 or ESP32 to Google Spreadsheet, then I highly recommend that you guys must watch my previous video. Sending data to Google Spreadsheet from ESP8266 or ESP32 is quite easy and you will get many videos on it. However, sending data from Google Spreadsheet to ESP8266 or ESP32 is a bit tricky and there is not a single video available on it so I decided to make a detailed video on it. So, in today's episode, you will learn how to make a soil moisture monitoring system using Google Spreadsheet or Google Sheets, ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, a soil moisture sensor. If you do not have this particular soil moisture sensor, it's okay, you can use any other type of the soil moisture sensor. You will also need a 5 volt buzzer and an OLED display module. All the components I'm using in this project, I have already made beginners level videos on them, the links of which you can find in the description given below. I have connected everything as per the circuit diagram which I will explain in a minute. But first I'm going to explain how this project actually works and then I will start practical demonstration. On the monitoring side, I have two Google spreadsheets. On this Google sheet, I'm using five columns for monitoring, date, time, temperature, humidity, and soil moisture. On this Google spreadsheet, I am receiving data from the ESP8266. While the other Google spreadsheet I am using for setting the threshold values of soil moisture and temperature. Let's say that I want the buzzer to turn on when the soil moisture drops below 60%, then I will simply write 60 over here. And in the same way, if I want the LED to turn on when the temperature increases above 45 degrees Celsius, then I will simply write 45 over here. To further confirm that the Google spreadsheet actually sends these threshold values to the ESP8266, I will be displaying these values on the OLED display module. So I will use buzzer as an indicator when the soil moisture drops below the threshold value and I will use the ESP8266 onboard LED as an indicator when the temperature increases above the set value or threshold value. Now, let's go ahead and kick off our practical demonstration. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect, and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share, and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultim Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts etc. right in the design environment. So you can focus on your designs. Links to the Ultium designer Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. I have powered up all the electronics right now ESP8266 and laptop or connected with the Wi-Fi. 
After every few seconds, I am receiving the temperature, humidity and soil moisture values from the ESP8266. This time duration can be changed in the programming. Right now the buzzer is off as the soil moisture value is above the threshold value. Let's say I want to maintain the soil moisture value above 60%. So what I will do, I will simply increase the threshold value. It takes a few seconds before the value is updated on the OLED display module. You can see the threshold value on the OLED display module is updated and also the buzzer has turned on. You can also see the onboard LED is off as the temperature is below the threshold value of 45 degrees Celsius. I can also change this value. Let me change this to 25 degrees Celsius. You can see the value on the OLED display module is updated and you can also see the LED has turned on. Let me change this again. Now the threshold values are set. So now I can go ahead and add some water. You can see the updated value of the soil moisture and the buzzer has also turned off. Now I am going to apply some heat. You can see the temperature value has increased and also the onboard LED has turned on. I am sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system work. So without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. I'm using a 5 volt tablet power supply to power up all the electronics. The SCK or SCL and SDA pins of the SSD1306 OLED display module are connected with the D1 and D2 pins on the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, while the VDD and ground pins of the OLED display module are connected with the 3.3V and ground pins. D4 pin on the ESP8266 is used to control the 5 volt buzzer. I use 2N2222 NPN transistor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor to control this buzzer. The transistor and resistor make the driver circuit. Data pin of the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor is connected with the D3 pin on the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, while the voltage and ground pins of the DHT11 sensor are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins. The analog output pin of the soil moisture is connected with the A0 pin and VCC and ground pins are connected with the 5 volt and ground. So that's all about the circuit diagram. And now let's work on the Google spreadsheet. This part of the Google spreadsheet I have already explained in my previous video on the Google spreadsheet and ESP8266 in which I have explained how to send data from ESP8266 to Google spreadsheet. So I won't talk during this part of the video, but I will explain things which are related to sending data from Google spreadsheet to ESP8266.
We are done with the settings for receiving data from the ESP8266. Now, to send data from Google Spreadsheet to ESP8266, add another Google Sheet in the same way as we did previously. Give a name to the spreadsheet. Set the column names as soil moisture and temperature. Values stored in A2 and B2 cells are going to be sent to ESP8266. So in the programming, we will only access these two cells. Click on the extensions and select Apes Scripts. You can copy this script code from my article. All the other steps are exactly the same. Now copy the deployment ID. Paste it next to the gscripted ID. This is used for receiving data from Google script address. Finally, you can click on the done button. Our Google spreadsheets are ready for receiving and sending the data. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This is the same exact program which I previously used for sending data from ESP8266 to Google Spreadsheet. This time I also added code for sending data from Google Spreadsheet to ESP8266. You can download all these libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. For this project, you will also need these three files debugmacros.h, http redirect.cpp and http redirect.h these files are need to be placed with the main programming file in the same folder finally i uploaded the program I have powered up all the electronics right now ESP8266 and laptop are connected with the Wi-Fi. After every few seconds, I am receiving the temperature, humidity and soil moisture values from the ESP8266. This time duration can be changed in the programming. Right now the buzzer is off as the soil moisture value is above the threshold value. Let's say I want to maintain the soil moisture value above 60%. So what I will do, I will simply increase the threshold value. It takes a few seconds before the value is updated on the OLED display module. You can see the threshold value on the OLED display module is updated and also the buzzer has turned on. You can also see the onboard LED is off as the temperature is below the threshold value of 45 degrees Celsius. I can also change this value let me change this to 25 degrees celsius you can see the value on the OLED display module is updated and you can also see the LED has turned on let me change this again Now the threshold values are set, so now I can go ahead and add some water.
you can see the updated value of the soil moisture and the buzzer has also turned off. Now I'm going to apply some heat. You can see the temperature value has increased and also the onboard LED has turned on. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.